Hello guys, today I will try to make an introduction to Inertia.js with an example of Laravel Breeze framework version with Inertia. And Inertia is one of the modern ways how to build single page applications, but in a different way than we have been doing before. So before we can go actually to the page called who is it for? It describes it really well. So if you, for example, if you are a backend developer historically, but you want to change your application to single page application, SPA, which means that whenever you click some link, the full page wouldn't refresh and only the data would be refreshed without full circle to the server and back. So before inertia, what would you do? You need to build the API, then you need to figure out the auth for that API, client side, state management, routing as well, setting up a new Git repo for the API, then hosting and stuff like that. So Inertia is here to solve all of that with a different approach to single page applications, which means that you would stick mostly with your Laravel routes and Laravel logic and load those Laravel routes from Inertia Vue.js components. Inertia is not only for Laravel and it's not only for Vue.js, it works also with other technologies like React or Rails on the backend. But in this video, we will take a look at Vue.js version with Laravel, with Laravel Breeze as an example. And Laravel Breeze is one of starter kits officially by Laravel. If we go to Laravel Breeze, you can install that by Composer Require. But maybe some of you don't know that recently Taylor released Inertia version of the Breeze. There was a tweet and Laravel News article in February of 2021. Again, I will zoom it in. Taylor released the inertia option and the syntax, by the way, changed since that tweet, there was inertia. But since then, the starter kit became view. And also, by the way, there's React, but we won't talk about React in this video. So if you want to install Laravel Breeze with inertia, you should choose install view. And I've done exactly that. And my Laravel Breeze local installation looks like this. So default Laravel homepage. And what is the main purpose of inertia here? So when you click register, see it loads immediately so it doesn't even go to the server to load all the page so let's click around immediate immediate login forgot your password so it's blazing fast why because if we open the development console network we click login only one login request with an image then home page then register already registered, forgot your password, something like that, but no assets are reloaded from the server, which means the exact single page application. So the page is already loaded, the whole page, this area, but inside of that page, these internal parts are reloaded. Only these internal parts are reloaded, but not the full page with full HTML. Now let's dive into the code, how it all works. To start using Inertia, you need to do two installations, server side and client side. On the server side, there is a package Inertia Laravel, and also you need to prepare root template with Blade, and this is exactly done in Laravel Breeze. So in Composer JSON, we have Inertia Laravel here on top of Laravel Breeze, and also there's App Blade. Let me find it, Resources, Views, App Blade, this one. So this is the main HTML, which would be loaded only once, and then the inertia part will be reloaded. So only this internal part. A few more inertia related stuff. So routes, we will talk about that in a minute. And then this is outside of beginner tutorial. So let's skip that browser sync. That's totally optional. And then we also need to set up the client side. So I will show an example of view three, which is exactly the base of Laravel Breeze view version. So we need to install inertia and inertia view three which is exactly in our package JSON. If we take a look here, there's inertia, inertia view three, and there's also optional library for inertia progress, which is down below basically. So if you want to view the progress bar on top, whenever the page is loaded, so this is for progress bar, and that's also optional. But the main parts are these inertia and inertia view three. And then in your main app.js file in view main app.js file, you would have something like this. So let's open that app.js. In the breeze, it's almost copy pasted from the official documentation. So I won't even really discuss too much of it. The basics is that pages will contain all the view components, which will be actually the pages. So we won't have blade pages of Laravel. We'll have view components instead, which are all in the pages. So for example, you have resources.js pages, 
auth and then we'll be login register and all of those dashboard and welcome and we will take a look at them in a minute and then the main magic happens here in the routes web this is laravel code instead of doing return view you do inertia render it could be in laravel controller for example home controller which would return inertia render instead of view so inertia render accepts the component welcome which is in resources js pages welcome blade here and passes the parameters like it would pass the parameters to the view, to the blade view. But actually it passes the parameter to view.js view. Let's take a look at welcome view. Welcome.view, it's a typical view.js template, view.js component, so template and script at the bottom on top of a regular view.js. So at the bottom we have script and we have those properties, can login, can register Laravel version and PHP version, which are all on the home page here. So those variables for Laravel version or PHP version and the links that can login or register, and they're used as a typical Vue.js variable. So if we search for can login in the same page, we have v if can login. So it's a typical Vue.js component, but the difference is that with the help of inertia, we can load that Vue.js component with passing the parameters from Laravel to Vue.js directly. Previously, it was possible with some kind of hacky way or doing API calls from the view component. So you would load view component and in here in welcome view, you would have at the bottom some API call to get the Laravel version, PHP version or others. So inertia makes that process much faster. So that's one advantage of inertia. And then the whole jumping between the links that I've shown you a few minutes ago happens by replacing regular HTML links with href to inertia link with route and that route comes from Laravel routes. So in the view components, you can call routes from Laravel with help of another library called Titan Ziggy, which we install in the Laravel part in the composer JSON. It allows you to have route helper inside of your JavaScript components. So it's inside of our composer JSON and here in Titan Code Ziggy, it comes with Laravel Breeze Inertia version by default installed. So we don't need to install that manually in this case. So we can have route login, which comes from the routes web, or in fact, it comes even deeper. So in default Laravel Breeze, we have routes auth as a separate required file. And in routes auth, all we have is typical Laravel controllers with Laravel routing. So there's nothing about inertia in this file. So every route has a name and we point to that name like name login in Vue.js components. So that's another kind of a magic happening. You can point to Laravel routes from Vue.js component. And inside of that authenticated session controller in Breeze, instead of having return view, we have the same thing, return inertia render and we render the component of resources.js pages auth login view, which is Vue.js component. So in this case, in this project, we don't even have blade files. We work with view templates instead, but we pass the parameters to those components directly from Laravel, like they would be blade views. So that's what inertia allows us to do. Another important part of inertia is passing global parameters like this one. So we have v if, and if the auth user exists, then we show the dashboard link, else we show login and register, right? So where this thing comes from? In the installation of inertia in the backend part, after installing dependency and all of that, you have middleware and Laravel Breeze generates it for us by default. So there's a middleware handle inertia requests and it is in app HTTP middleware handle inertia requests and there is a share method where we can share any global variables that you want. Define the props that are shared by default. So in this case, we define auth array and user inside of it, which becomes auth.user in here. So props is a global prop. So auth.user comes from that middleware and you can add more global variables in here. Another good thing about inertia is that you don't need to do anything on the JavaScript side for authentication and permissions. You can use Laravel routes middlewares wherever you need to perform something on the dashboard. For example, you protect the dashboard by passing the middleware here auth verified. So that's another thing that you can reuse from Laravel to work with Vue.js components. So that dashboard is also a Vue.js component, which is in resources, JS, pages, dashboard view, and it is protected by Laravel middleware, auth, and verified. 
And the final thing in this introduction video, let's take a look at the forms, how login form is submitted. In Laravel Breeze, Taylor created quite a lot of components. So Breeze label is a component in resources JS component. So there's a set of view components. So we don't really care about that for now. It's just a thing that exists by default in Breeze and you can check them out. But what we do care about is Breeze button, which is a submit button for the form. The form is without any routes, without any actions, but submit prevent submit. And submit is a method in the script part of the Vue.js component. So in import part, you do have those components and layouts, also layouts there, are resources, JS layouts, so you can check them out as well, authenticated and guessed. But what we care about is this. So we have form of this inertia form with a dollar sign and that form contains email, password and remember false. And that method submit that we saw earlier does post request to what? To this route login. And whatever happens with that login, it resets the password. So for example, if some validation comes like login invalid, the password would be cleared up. And that route login, if we go back to routes web or in fact routes auth PHP, post to login, comes from authenticated session controller store. And this doesn't have anything to do with inertia at all. It works as a typical Laravel controller method with store with validation from Laravel. Everything is Laravel and it redirects where it should redirect. But inside of that inertia page, it still is a single page application. So this is how forms are submitted in inertia. You may find a bit different syntax. For example, in the official documentation, they use a thing called reactive here and submit inertia post instead of dollar inertia. So you may find different syntax versions here. And also keep in mind that view three and view two may be different. So this is view two example. So if you try to work with inertia, please double check the source of the code, the view versions, inertia versions, and when the article was written. I'm not sure that even this syntax would work like in a year from now, if you watch this video in the future, for example. So that's it as an introduction video to inertia JS. What do you think about that? It's kind of like alternative or the opposite to Livewire, which is also popular in the Laravel community. So both frameworks, or it's not even a framework, both technologies appeared roughly at the same time. And that's why Laravel Jetstream, for example, has Livewire version and Inertia version in itself, because Taylor said he liked them both and wasn't able to choose between one or another. So what do you think? Have you used Inertia and did you like it? Or if you haven't, would you start or would you try it out? You can also, of course, get a bit deeper into Laravel Breeze code. So install that with Vue. And there are a lot of things that I haven't touched in this introduction video. So you can dive deeper. And that's it for this video. If you want more tips on Laravel or related technologies like Inertia, subscribe to the channel and tell your friends to subscribe because I'm shooting videos daily now. And see you guys in other videos.